Okay, I'm making this video because of the, the jumping puma question. And I, I know my jumping puma doesn't look much like a jumping puma, but you can um, you can tell what I'm doing there. So, the uh, question on the puma jumping at a 45 degree angle kind of um, vexed me a, a little bit. Because although I could find the answer, um, I knew there was an easier way. And, and so I sat around, and um, if you know me, I don't really read the the textbook or listen to the videos before I, I do the homework and matter of fact I, I haven't really um, done either of those yet so if this is already in one of the videos by the professor then um, or in the textbook then you guys can um, let me know in some comments but uh, I went ahead and I found a, a, a way using some basic equations that I've, I've learned a while back on uh, velocity to kind of extrapolate one single equation that will tell us the initial velocity of our, our jumping panther. Um, it will only give us in, in one uh, initial direction, but uh, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. So the first thing I did is that I use the definition of acceleration. So acceleration equals the final velocity minus the initial velocity over time. So in other words, another way of saying this is the change of velocity, and I don't need that, the change of velocity over time. But we want to we want to use it in terms where we're talking about initial velocity because we're trying to solve use an create an equation to solve for our initial velocity. So we're saying it's the change in velocity over time, which is the final minus the initial. And so we let's use that, and let's just solve for initial velocity really quick. So initial velocity would be at, um, then you would subtract uh, v, uh, the final velocity, from both sides. And you would have a negative initial velocity. So you can multiply that through, uh, the negative one through, and the initial velocity would equal the final velocity minus the acceleration times the time. Now the problem with our jumping panther is we're not given the time component of this. So we need to figure out another way to, um, to find the time. So here's the equation we have. We have the initial velocity equals the final velocity minus a times t. But so there's, we got to find another equation for time and, and insert that that definition into um, into our our answer. The the thing is we have to do it in terms that also does not include at least one of these different variables. So it it either can't include acceleration velocity, uh, final velocity, or initial velocity. So one way of doing that is um, with the definition of average velocity. So average velocity. Um, is is defined such that average velocity times time equals our our distance, our our change in in displacement. So I'll, I'll just put displacement or for this point. So the change in velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Okay, I'm sorry, I I'm I'm messing this up. The average velocity is my I didn't really mess it up. This is my final velocity pl plus my initial velocity divided by 2. So this is also the same as saying my change in position um, divided by time. But this is my initial instantaneous velocity plus my final instantaneous velocity divided by 2. If I multiply that times time, I get the change of, we'll say the change of x. Then I can solve this equation in terms of in terms of time so I can start by multiplying by 2 so I get um, 2 times the change of x equals uh, the initial velocity plus the final velocity times time and then I can divide by this term right here and so I would get time equals 2 times the change of x divided by the initial plus the final. And now the beauty of this is I can take this term 
and replace it right here where my time is on my problem where I've solved for initial velocity. So let's go ahead and do that. My initial velocity will now equal my final velocity plus a times this new term 2 times the change of x over the initial plus the final velocity. So now the only thing left to do is to simplify this equation. And that's going to be a couple step process. So I've got vi equals the final velocity plus 2a change of x over initial plus final velocity. I'm going to multiply this term through both sides. And I'll get vi, the initial velocity times the initial plus the final, equals the final velocity times the initial plus the final plus 2a of x. And now when I FOIL, so I'm going to get vi squared, I'm going to get vf squared. I'm also going to get a vi plus a vf and a vf plus a vi. Whenever I subtract that term out, it's going to cancel each other out. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this vf and this vi cancel each other out. Um, go ahead and FOIL it out if you want to to prove it to yourself. So what I end up getting here is vi squared equals vf squared minus 2 times the acceleration times the change of x or the distance. And then I can just um, simply take the square root of both sides and I'll get vi equals the square root of the final velocity squared minus 2a change of x. And the thing in this equation is we know that a is a negative quantity. Um, also, we know that we know uh, with a jumping puma, jumping to his maximum height, we know that the final velocity is going to be zero at the maximum height. So that can be simplified for this particular um, problem. So here's our equation. The initial velocity equals the square root of our final velocity squared minus 2 times acceleration times the change of x. But for our particular ex um, point where we're jumping to a maximum height and our final velocity becomes 0, then we can simplify this to um, negative 2 times the acceleration times the distance or the change of, di of x. This is going to give you the upward the upward vector it is not going to give you the vertical vector you have to use um, the Pythagorean theorem and, and uh, the um, laws of uh, sine cosine and tangent to figure out the other side of that and then to add those together to get your your resultant vector but this will give you the one side just the simple equation the initial velocity equals the square root of 2 times the acceleration times the change of x. And the great thing is, you don't have to memorize this because I just showed you how to derive the equation based on very, very simple equations, and we just recombine them in a new way.